Okay, stop. I already know exactly what y'all doing right now. I can picture it. I can picture many fingers typing as we speak in the comment section. And y'all letting it rip. Personas is watching, so, you know. Anyway, let's let's talk pros. And, of course, we're going to hit the cons. But let's get into the pros first. We notice a slight change in design. That's the first thing we notice. The way that the event section look it looks rounded on the corners if i can so we zoom in just tab it this is a project that i was working on so see there you have it you notice the change in the, the edges it's a little bit more rounded and y'all be the judge on how that looks it looks pretty nice this is what it looks like if your stuff is grouped it's got like a nice little shading around it and it actually shows you all of the wave or midi should i say so we scroll here to the top we got some midi action right here and this is what it looks like <laughs> So I am happy to say that something new that they did. I know that this was a request, but check out how we have this loop deal. If you come to the edge of it and just slightly, well, maybe at the bottom corner, it will begin to loop over and over and over and over to your heart's content. Now that's just down there. Same deal up here at the top. You want to just come here at the bottom where you see the little loop icon and boom. That's that's dope. We now have clip lines. Whoever requests that, job well done. I think I made mentions like it would be nice if it could do that, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me. But we now have clip lines. So that means you can go in and, and grab a sample and just throw it in there. You know what I mean? Do whatever you need to. Let's visit the browser section real quick and show you. And speaking of the browser, there was a little change that happened here. Now we can see the waveforms regular as we prefer it. And you, you guys know that sometimes there's wave information in here and the way it was set up before you couldn't tell when any transient hits so sometimes it these files would appear to be empty but you're not knowing that it's something that just takes a long time in the beginning and then in the middle or towards the end that might be something there that was something i always hated about persona stuff like some of that stuff is like that but i guess they do like that to fit a track so if you was to go in, the, in that specific category category because that is probably a part of a song it it has an area where it's supposed to hit and blah 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 whatever but now we can see the wave you know what i'm saying and then we can jump to wherever it is go backwards we can see it now that's pretty much what i'm what i'm getting at so if i was to throw that in here and then let's just solo that so now we got the clip deal so the cat is out of the bag, right? Or something else is out of the bag. But we now have integration with Splice. It is now integrated inside of the browser, which which is a good thing. It's certainly a good thing. Anything to help make the workflow seamless, this is all welcome. All you have to do is log in to your account and it will you know, allow you those those credentials and then you can go ahead and, and add stuff to your project. So you have all of the 
controls or options available to you the things that matters the most so you can browse via instrument genre or cinematic effects which is those are like probably the most three categories i would say i like to search for so in a lot of cases i will go for categories or the genre and say we go for soul or you could just simply type in what you're looking for and all right so say for instance say for instance we 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 drag drag it in because i'm gonna show you guys something else that they did they add stem separation in here so we got this in the clip launch real quick i want to see how well this separation works now this is not a full flex song this is, you know it's not much going on so i would imagine yeah let's just see oh real quick before i restart my computer because i'm installing this stem separation deal if you don't see splice in your deal you have to click now the way i'm showing this to you guys I have my screen kind of consolidated or like shortened so like you may have to extend the browse out some to see everything or there might be a drop down window where where uh you know like when you click here you notice there there's a bunch of options so if, if you're if your browse area is is not fully you know what i mean then you might have to do that the other thing is you might have to go inside a view and then where it says browser tabs there's options to show the different things you can actually turn something off i believe oh it looks like everything you want to show in this case i have show splice and that happens to be the only thing that's checked which is interesting because i'm on that page duh yeah so you might have to that that's another option to do it that way the other thing is when you install these things you may have to go to your installation like you saw me do a few seconds ago which is really basically here when you go here to to installations you you get to install those things like stem separation is in this list so i have to restart studio one and splice was in here too you know what I mean? You have to install those different things in order to see it. All right. So now that we have stem separation installed, by the way, guys, for those of you that is not familiar with clip launch, it is basically a quick way to start something, get something going a quick four bar loop, eight bar loop is what we are always doing. All we do is take something and create in a range window and we just take that loop and loop it for four bars that's what we're doing anyway but now there's a dedicated section for that and it's essentially a cooler way to do it it's, it's designed to loop automatically instead of using the the loop deal here you know putting a loop up there now because this is a new feature inside of seven it doesn't mean you have to use it in order to get anything done it's just there you, if you don't want to use it that's totally fine you can keep doing things the way you've been doing it but for those of us that adopted that workflow of ableton live or bitwig this is certainly a welcomed feature all right let's see what this steam separation is all about this hype let's see if this hype is real all right we got four options vocal drums bass other i would say vocal no 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 vocal maybe drums bass and maybe other it's probably going to spit out consolidate select the stems and no we're not gonna go with that so we're gonna go with this and see what happens so we shall see all right it still spit out four different layers <laughs> Let's solo that and see what happens. Yeah, it, it will uh, push out vocals. I'm sorry. I, I just totally forgot there was vocals in there. All right, let's see what what we have. 
just you and I. No one left asking why. Then I don't have to die. Okay, so it got the vocal. And then it got a little bit of like this horn sound or whatever. And and that's because they they kind of sound the same. They're on the same the the same texture, same vibration. So just, so so the AI within this process is thinking that that's a part of the vocal, but and then it also comes real close to the vocal. So I think it did well. Not too bad. Okay. All right. So that's the bass. I think it did the bass really well. Yeah. All right. Let's see what this one is. So this one not so great. It's got a, the rhyme chops in there and that horn sound I tried to to exp, to express in the vocal sound. It's it's more sort of synth sound and it's kind of it's a part of this as well. However, I mean separation is new. It's at its first take 1.0 in studio one and i'm not sticking up for them but i mean i've always just felt like anytime you go this route of of trying to stem separate anything you're, you're not going to get a hundred percent like you were the one who created it you know what i mean when you can just mute the bass the drums and have only the solo going i mean that will ultimately be idea of whatever but you're taking something that was messed together and mixed you know what i mean i think it did well i've done sep stem separation before using isotope isotope is is, is kind of the same isotope might be a little bit better in, in cleaning up but i think it just depends it depends on what it what track you're working with that's that's what i want to say but these files are totally usable all right, let's talk about impact. Let's drag impact on in here. And <laughs> um, so here's impact, same as usual, nothing to it really. So what we was always able to do is take a file, drag it over, and before you let go to click, you hit, you hit shift. And then it will automatically splice across 16 pads. So now my opinion, this is not really ideal, but that's what, what I did in the past and then here's another way to do this you take that and you right click and you just say send to a new a new impact and it automatically will create the chops uh, uh, you know as, as well yeah. same deal same deal for like if you was to grab a loop from somewhere in the browser you can right click and send it to sample one or impact let me just do this real quick just so y'all what i was trying to explain earlier so like we got this side playing as well as the stuff in the arranging so so that means that this is deactivated because we separated everything we have control over everything now see what I'm saying so this could be you know a cool concept to 
yeah dope now of course when you're dealing with a virtual instrument there is a new section so you got to be on the piano roll in order for for you to see this new option here scale panel you click it and it will release this deal here and you click the down arrow and it will give you these different more common scale and then of course you can change it mainly and then you can say presets real quick you know what i mean and you can choose to snap everything to the scale like have the grid to respond to what you're doing in case you're trying to stay within the uh, confines of whatever scale you selected also when you click this here off to the right it will give you more of a finer detailed situation here so now on the left side instead of it showing you the it gives you more of a breakdown in terms of like this horizontal deal with the with the the name of the note and also give you information about the samples that you're using and then if you just only want what's used then this is what you get so this is everything and then this is used and then this is using the scale or the piano roll the normal typical studio one piano roll speaking of impact if we go a little bit deeper a little further there is something else that is kind of cool speaking of clips as a matter of fact to go along with that because from that that family you know the concept of Ableton Live they did go ahead and give us the the concept even even further so I'm gonna get rid of the browser here so we can see that so in in impact impact and now integrate at the bottom of the screen I think that's dope I like that so now you have a quick access to what impact is but down at the bottom of the screen you don't have to pop out the window to to do what you need to do you know what i mean let me deactivate that you know what i'm saying it's the same impact guys it just because it's down here at the bottom don't mean that things change it's just they re reorchestrated you know what i mean just put it down at the bottom and then of course when you expand you can see everything but you can shorten it here and you only see the the main effects where you change the pitch the filter the amp and make adjustments to your samples and then you still have the drop down deal here and you can save your presets you can choose between this view or that view when you are in a collapsed view so to speak and then if you just want to bring this thing out you can do that or you could just click here it brings it out as well and there's pretty several areas you can also click down here you know several areas that if you, you know if that's what you look for i wonder what will happen if i do that okay that's what it is so when you collapse it those other options yep that's what happens yep i think it's cool i think it's a step in the right direction i want to say that this is the only one that does this so don't go looking for other plugins to get this feel down here because i don't think you can do that with anything else but it's a step bravo personas here is something else i've I, you, it, it's not a real big major deal here in here but for me i get excited about this and i think this might be probably i don't want to say favorite but it, it 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 hits me pretty heavy when now when dealing with multi-timbral so to speak when you you know when you're dealing with one instance of the instrument 
that can handle multiple layers of different instruments like for instance this impact here it's got different lanes pad one is doing something pad two might be my snare pad three might be a tom pad four might be hi-hat you know what i mean different lanes and you want to export those or or set up a different channel for each of them you know what i mean for mixing purposes well before it was different in the arrange window things kind of just hung outside of the master disk. so this is the master input or in, impact right but anytime i go in here and i say you know i want this one to be channel one right i want this to be channel two i want this to be channel three you know what i mean and and so forth so it's real easy to change the channel and make them separate individual or whatever you can also reflect that by you know going here you can open up these different lanes and blah 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 like you know this is the same method i use using contact it's the same stuff because i like using one instance of contact instead of having a million of them open we're in contact eight and let's just add another instrument i'm just throwing random stuff three different instruments in one instance of contact eight go to classic view and this is what i was trying to do so for that purpose all right so we're going to flip this over to where we can see the routing and usually what i do is make my channel follow there is a settings that does this automatically but things change i got to go back and fix it so this is coming out of one as far as my routing this one's going to come out of two this one is going to come out of three right so for instance I'm going to also create three instances of contact in terms of the MIDI lanes here. And I'm just, I just color code them so, so we can see that that's, that's contact there. And then what we want to do is say channel one. We want this to be channel two. And then for this one, we want this to be channel three, right? That's right. And I'm noticing something. It used to say event one, event two, but I guess they went back to the channel. Channel made better sense, I, I assume. Anyway, I want to open these lanes up. So we got one and two stereo, three, four, five, six sweet i don't really care for the keyboard there but what i'm gonna do here is okay so that's channel one right this one is it's coming out of channel three i'm sorry channel two and this one is that's three, right? All right. So if we did this correctly, we know that this is contact down here in the mixer window. And when we open this up, you see what I'm saying? All of these additional tracks that we created in terms of the output now lives within this deal where we can open it and collapse it. I'm going to change the color of this as well. Now we can see what's happening. I'm going to close that. So again, the third one. And then the second one. You know what I mean? And then the first one. And then collapse it all that's dope to me that wasn't 
a thing before what i had to do was because they live outside of the tracks i, I just took them all and group them together but now they fix that now it makes sense makes a whole lot of sense and so there is obviously more features in here that i'm not talking about in this video because the video will be too long it's just like small little things that it's pretty cool like for instance deep flight is a new instrument i have not had a chance to download that and or like if you're into cv instrument controlling external synthesizers that's also a supported feature in here and yeah let me stop there because like i said i'll keep going now those are the pros let's talk about the cons now as we saw impact impact is still the same impact is still impact is is not doing any advanced features like this the sampler like we asked for i would imagine that that will be coming in the later months but i can't promise you guys that i don't have any info on that but you know again i can see the comment section being filled with that one being probably one of the hot topics because a lot of people were counting on that a real drum machine or sample editor sort of like what we have in machine you know like that the concept of that or just the way that ableton live sampler works there is still no additional samplers or sample engine should i say that's what i'm meaning to say there's still only let me see if i go to this audio here there's still only drum sound solo and tape i really use tape resampler it, it i have to be doing something really unique but it's just it's just these in ableton there is it's a nice little thick list of things because then at that point we can change the sound when we when we start talking about being creative we could change the granular effect of something the grain the the like transient points where it dips in and out stuff like that inside of ableton i i go when i'm when i'm importing drums inside those usually are the first the first features i'm using stuff that's like a part of the program that's stock stock functions right there um in order to do anything like that here in studio one you have to chop the sample you have to physically chop the sample in order to do that but it's not it's not it's not too bad you know what i mean like i've used studio one on several occasions where i can get it to do whatever and this is also where third-party plugins come in at but would have loved to see native you know more engines that can support that that type of sound design workflow the other thing is we still have not yet to see a update to the note effects the note effects are still the same and i don't know i don't i don't know like they just totally they totally ne neglect this section right here like yeah they don't need that we're not worried you know this is still the the design of 2.0 i think like they have not touched they have not touched this at all at all there is no new presets everything is still the same or maybe those are new presets that look kind of thick yeah look a little bit more than usual hmm. maybe they did <laughs> But it's still the same features, the same same deal. Like your octave, change of resolution right here, your gate, your swing, and then you can. That, that's about it. And then you just have these different patterns to play around with. That's it. Again, able to live is eating this stuff alive. The other one is quarter. I don't know input filter 
I don't know. I don't know. This would have maybe, maybe, maybe we are to see this soon because if if you're going to start dabbling into the modeler device look of things, like what they did with Impact, putting it in the near near the piano roll area. If you're going to start dabbling into those type of things, then that means that we might see the effect of how Modeler affects MIDI, even when you put something before, which is what these note effects are. It's just essentially putting it before MIDI, essentially, you know what I mean? And it affects the notes that comes after it. Maybe the next update, we'll see something or more of an updated version of this being, you know, being viewable in the piano roll where we can do different things. Um, Ableton Live, Bitwig, like that, the whole Mottler deal where you could put something in before, it, but Ableton, again, I'm going to always speak up on Ableton because, you know, when it, what they did in 12, it's like next level, what you can do with MIDI and we, we need that. <laughs> that type of stuff we need here in Studio One instead of relying on third party plugins, which, you know, I don't know. More importantly, the browser. I, I'm not going to lie. I do appreciate the integration in, that they added with Splice because Splice is one of those deals that a lot of us use to help us inspire us. You know what I mean? So it's cool that it's now integrated. You no longer have to use the app. You know what I mean? It's now in your doll. You can just drag and drop. And with that being said, when you play your song and you playing clips from your, you know, splice, everything's syncing up and you get to see and hear what it sounds like even before you bring it in. You know what I mean? Everything is just seamless. Just, you know what I mean? Working in integration. Integration is immaculous when when dealing with stuff like this you know what I mean as a producer things working together is always a great thing but that's it though that's it that's it I love the fact that they updated the the player you know when we play in loops or whatever but you know maybe this is just me being one of those guys that's just complaining like everything you know what i mean because i do say that about people like man every time somebody making an update about something you think that that is that's gonna wow them and then here comes somebody oh um, they got something to say and yeah um i guess i guess maybe maybe this is what we are to look forward to since they made that announcement about the updates the frequent updates that they're making Maybe that is the fix because they know they behind, you know what I mean? And so they they're trying to make sense out of how they push in the updates closer to us to make it. I don't know. I don't know. I do think money is involved tremendously absolutely everything costs money and a lot of people are just gonna feel like they're being ripped off and and you know you you have a right to feel that way you know my take on stuff like this is that if you are not vibing with this stuff the updates or whatever you feel like this is not it you know what i mean this is a waste of money then you know that's just how you feel you know i respect it i have no choice it's your money, it's your music, it's your lifestyle, it's, it's all you. It it doesn't hurt my feelings if someone doesn't upgrade, you know what I mean? I hope that I'm able to get on this platform and share with you guys what's happening with the what's happening, you know what I mean? The, the, the what's up to just production workflow in general. And not exclusive to Studio One either, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a music producer, I'm a music composer. A lot of you guys follow the channel because you use Studio One as well. I'm starting to build up a, a Bitwig, you know, family. 
certainly Ableton or whatever, but like hopefully what I'm what I what I hope that you guys get from this channel is is just production. You know what I mean? Just how is Elop doing this stuff and what is he how is he structuring things? And it doesn't matter what doll you're using because they all essentially the same thing. You stick with whatever doll that makes sense to you and your workflow and that works for you. So if you are like one of those able to live persons or like a Cubase person or FL Studio person and that's where your your flow is, stick to that. You know what I mean? Just because we got stem separation in here don't mean you need to drum ship or whatever. But uh, it is certainly cool that they are listening because that's something I heard you guys mention, the stem separation. And, you know, rightfully so, you know, other dolls are now doing it now. And so it's like it would only feel right that they go ahead and add that in here. I believe there was some update to the surround sound or whatever. I have not looked at that to see what, what changes or maybe I got that information wrong. But um. I encourage you guys to look at the the list or whatever and of course look around on YouTube and seeing what other people are saying about the update. I think it's cool. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? We're obviously going to be covering more. We're obviously going to be doing a little bit more on the live streams as well because this is new and some of you guys I'm pretty sure is, is interested in, in learning the workflow and this may be a way to tap into the clip launch workflow or like you Ableton Live users coming from Ableton Live in Studio One, you get to keep that, that you know what I mean, that familiarity, you know, this is familiar to you, you know, yes, now we finally got it, you know what I mean, so, that's all I have for you guys, I'm Ella B Culture, remember lifestyle governed by art.